everyone, and welcome to the Uplifting Impact Podcast. My name is Deanna Singh, and I am the Chief Change Agent for Uplifting Impact. I am excited to be hosting you again this week as we dive deeper into our journey on what it means to be a, an organization and a leader who really values diversity, equity, and inclusion. And today's guest is Miss Carla Fulmore. Uh, Carla has a very awesome background. What she focuses on is really the marketing program management space. She began her career at Office Depot in 2007 and has worked in multiple functions of the business, including digital merchandising and direct-to-consumer marketing. She also has had a lot of different leadership capacity uh, and, and leadership opportunities across many different organizations. She was formerly the leader of the Office Depot's Women of Color Association resource group. And now she is the DEI program uh, leader, and she's really focusing on DEI programming at Amazon, leading efforts on global engineering and with the global engineering team. So really looking at this, not just from a local perspective, but also from a global perspective. Carla, thanks for being here with us today. Thank you for the invite. I'm very excited to be here and joining this conversation. Wonderful. So we're going to jump right into uh, the, the conversation because I have a lot of questions for you. I'm just mm -hmm. going to prepare everybody in the audience <laughs> that I have a lot of things to ask you. But one of my first questions really comes back to marketing. So I have a lot of people who reach out to me and they'll ask questions like, oh, you know, is it okay for us to, to talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion as we talk about our marketing efforts? And, you know, there's a sense that, I don't know, we shouldn't do that. Or maybe it, it, it's not something that um, we can talk about, even if we are doing it. Or it just seems like people don't really know if there should be a connection and if there should be a connection, what that connection looks like and how to make it an appropriate connection. So I'm just curious, answer that for us. Tell me, how can you really think about marketing and how can you and should you be tying it into your DEI efforts? Absolutely. Well, I will start by saying that um, I believe marketing is one of the biggest outreach tools that an organization can have. Um, marketing communicates the organization's core values. Um, and as we saw um, during the social, the height of the social unrest in 2020, there are a lot of companies that came out with inclusive statements. Um, but a lot of people were wondering after the fact, where is that inclusion as they move forward in their everyday business plans? Um, marketing can be used to establish an emotional connection between communities and the organization. Um, that's why it's very important it's very important that those organizations um, bring to the forefront um, their core values when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusions. And the be best way to do that is through their marketing. Um, when people have that emotional connection established, when people know that these organizations see me, they value me, they value my community, it's more likely to create a loyal customer base, which in turn will generate to increase profitabilities for these organizations. So it's very important that everyone sees themselves represented in the marketing efforts of the organizations. And those are conversations that need to be had at the strategic table when you're doing your planning, when you're talking, when you're organi organizing. So yes, definitely, there's definitely a space for DEI in marketing. And I think that is hugely important. You know, I think that's, um, thank you very much for providing that context. I think one of the things that's, you know, interesting about the marketing space, and I loved how you said this, but it is this idea that that's how we communicate, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, mar marketing is literally like, the voice box of who we are as an organization. The marketing team is the one who gets to put out like, this is, this is what it means when we say these things, this is what mm -hmm. it means when we put this product out into the marketplace. And so that's a huge responsibility, right? To say, if, if we have DEI efforts and they're not showing up in our marketing, then we're saying that's not really a part of us, right? Mm -hmm. If that the absence has, has some volume to it too. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that is critical um, as we continue to move forward in um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. People want to see themselves represented. Um, as a marketer, um, I get a lot of things that come across my desk for approval. And there have been times when I've had to push back and say, can we add a little bit more diversity in this? Um, it's very important that your marketing collateral reflects the world. Um, people want to see themselves in your advertising, in your digital publications. Um, that's very important that you have a, a 
a, a platform or a marketing slate or a marketing mix that is inclusive of everyone. Yeah. And that idea of representation, right? Like, and what that, what that means for people, I'll tell you one of my like favorite moments. So I wrote, you know, children's books, they all feature children of color, but when I get an opportunity to go and talk to children and have conversations with them, one of my favorite moments, and it happens all of the time when I'm having these conversations is a child will walk up to me and they'll say, this looks like me, you know, like they'll open the book and they'll say, this looks like me. Mm -hmm. And I just remember how much, you know, especially growing up as a child of color, like looking around and not seeing myself represented Mm -hmm. and and really making some inferences even about what that meant. Right. Mm -hmm. What is, what is that? What is that? Not just about the company, but even just about society as a whole. Well, what does that mean? Where is my role in, in some of these places? So I agree with you. I think that when we think about representation, the impact of what it does with our consumers, what it does with our clients, but also what it does on the psychological level of what we're putting into the community and how, how people are kind of self-identifying. It's huge, right? There's so much power there. It absolutely is. And I, you know, as a marketer, um, with the whole concept of diversity, equity, and inclusion being fairly new, um, there are times as marketers where you're blind to it. You're used to the status quo. You're used to seeing materials and collaterals that are reflective of how it's always been. Usually one demographic is always featured. Um, But adding that mix to it, I think it it does wonders for the organization. It shows growth. It shows evolution. Um, And it, it, it provides impact to the communities that you're doing business with. So it's crucial. It's hugely important. That's awesome. Okay, so now everybody's bought in. Everybody wants to be more thoughtful about what they're doing and how they're using their power and their platform with marketing. But how? Carla, how do you create an inclusive marketing plan? Can you give us some tips? Yeah, absolutely. I think that begins with having a diverse pool of individuals creating that marketing plan. Um, You know, a mentor once says to me, um, if you're making decisions and everyone in the room looks like you, I can guarantee you you're making some bad decisions. An example I'll give of that is, um, you know, we all remember the H&M debacle with um, the coolest monkey in the jungle sweatshirt. I can guarantee you there were no people of color in the room when that decision was made. Um, So it's very important to have representation of all communities sitting at the table. Um, And that way, you know, you can identify biases, be it in your marketing mix and your marketing strategy. Um, You are able to have some influence of what's important to my community. What do we need to see in order to become that loyal customer, um, to increase the company's bottom line, and just really to expand throughout our communities that we're an all-inclusive organization. We see everyone and we value every community. I think that's hugely important. So I have a, I do have a question, right? Because I I think that I agree with you, right? Having representation and having people from different demographics. So one of the pieces of pushback that we get is, well, I can't possibly have everybody represented at at the table, like, you know, or all the different social identities that are represented at the table. Um, Okay. Maybe, right? Like, I do think that we could push ourselves a little bit more in what we're doing, but yeah, that's fair, right? There's so many different identities and intersectionalities and different, you know, different, different ways that we represent ourselves. But what are some um, strategies that an organization might have in addition to trying to diversify who's at the table? Are there other things that they can do at that table as they're making some of these decisions to make sure that they are there, even if they don't have a social identity that's represented, they don't have a veteran or they don't have, right, that they're still raising up some of these um, topics that might be tied to social identity and representation. I think a very important question that we should ask ourselves as marketing leaders is, why is this important to me? And if it's not, conversely, ask the question, why is this not important to me? Um, that will help to uncover some of these biases that people just may not be aware of. Um, You know, I often struggled with the term unconscious bias because to me, I always went with the concept of how could you not know what you're doing, but it is very possible. And I think just pretty much owning um, that there there is a wide variety of individuals in our society. Um, Something as simple for me, things that I've tried to incorporate is, um, you know, if you're doing marketing emails, acknowledging Martin Luther King Day or Black History Month or Diwali or Hispanic Heritage Month, 
Um, I think those are huge attention grabbers um, to your community, to your audience, to your marketing mix. And again, as I stated before, it speaks to the community. Hey, this this company sees me. They get me. And as a consumer myself, I am more likely and I'm more inclined to spend my dollars and do business with organizations that I feel value me. And I think that marketing is a great tool to show that value to our consumers and to our society as a whole. Yeah. And I like that question, you know, why is this important to me or why is this not important to me? Mm -hmm. And really like stopping and and taking some reflection. So one of the things that we like to do is we have a whole host of questions that we like to ask at the table, not just at the marketing table, but at a lot of the different places where we come up with strategy for our organization. And I think that, you know, kind of positioning yourself and really training yourself to stop and say, hmm, how else should I be thinking about this? Mm-hmm. You know, maybe who's not represented here, but if I was thinking and trying to put myself in the perspective of somebody else, how might they see this a little bit differently than the way that I intend it to be? Mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. I think the world has got a lot of people with a lot of great intentions, but sometimes not having that moment of pause, that moment of reflection. Mm-hmm. How could this be, you know, even despite what my intentions are, if they're good and pure, how could this maybe be interpreted in a different kinds of way if I was looking at it with a different lens? And I'd like to expand on that a little bit. You know, I had the opportunity of um, becoming a member of all of the the organization's resource groups for my um, former employer, Office Depot. And I was amazed at the knowledge that I learned just by attending those conversations. So I think education and awareness is key. Even if you're not able to identify with other communities, having those conversations, educating yourself, becoming aware and understanding at the end of the day, I feel like we're all fighting for the same thing. And that is the opportunity to be included regardless of who we are. Um, look at us for our talents, look at us for our, what we bring to the table, how we can actually help your organization grow and better perform. Um, when you take that out of the mix, um, you know, just our differences out of the mix, you'll understand that we're all individuals, we're talented, we bring a unique perspective to the table, and it should be valued. So I want to talk to you a little bit about your ERG experience, because I know you've had extensive experience in, in some people call it associate resource groups or executive resource groups. Um, But I have found that sometimes that is a really good way. Like if you're in a department where you don't have a lot of diversity or a lot of different, you know, representation, that sometimes tapping into your employee resource group is like an internal built-in support place where you can test some of this stuff. So I'm curious, one, have you seen that work? And, And two, just maybe if you could give us some insight into how that was such an effective part of your own career development, you know, being part of, um, an employee resource group. Absolutely. I've definitely seen it work. And one of the things that I use that group for um, is to engage people and promote allyship. I was surprised at the number of people that were happy to come on board and contribute their talents to expand in the mission of the group if I simply asked. Um, And then stepping outside of, you know, for example, I led the women of color group, but stepping outside of women of color and looking at people that had the talent and the skill set to actually drive our mission forward, be it white males, be it Hispanic women, be it whomever, you know, so that I think that's the core value. Um, And when you extend an invitation with people and people come in with an open mind, they actually learn and they grow. Um, Getting to your second question of how have I seen the um, employee resource group or the value that it had for me, I think that that's where I gained true leadership. Um, being able to step into an organization and be the head of it and be the lead and come up with a strategy and just really understanding what is important to me, what impact do I want to have here? And then driving out those initiatives that would incorporate or foster or grow or further expand and promote those initiatives. It has been huge for me. Um, I've gotten feedback from several people in my network of how they've noticed my growth since I joined this organization, um, creating new leaders, um, increasing the allyship, um, also demonstrating inclusion. Um, Again, as I said, um, I've been able to grow this group so that it spans beyond women of color, getting that allyship. And it's been hugely important in making impact throughout the organization and in the professional lives of the people that I interact with. You know, I, we never talk about that or we don't talk about it as as much as we should. You know, I, I often tell people like joining a board, right? Getting the opportunity to, to do that kind of work really does allow for you to expand your wings and, and learn more. But I love what you just said too. Even just our employee resource groups, when we think about the benefit that it offers to our organizations, yes, it could be a place where the marketing team could say, hey, 
we're thinking about this new idea. Could, could the woman's, you know, ERG look at this, could the, whatever, could, could we just get some other voices at the table before we go to market? Because we really value the expertise and, and the thoughts that you could bring to us that maybe we don't have already represented in, mm-hmm. in our group, but it also can be, you know what? We see all these amazing people who are talented in our organization and for us to really be able to uh, like see their skill set, to watch them grow, to give them the space that the ERG is a wonderful place to give people that opportunity too, right? Like to make it not just a, a side, you know, we, we talk about the fact that sometimes you can be on an ERG and it's like a whole other full-time job, right? Because it is. So- <laughs> Right. That, that's, that's the truth. That's, that's real talk. People are passionate. They they're volunteering their time, but how do we also make sure that that is tied to the way that people grow instead of, instead of that happening kind of as happenstance and sort of, you know, maybe by chance really being intentional about having that be a, a focus of the ERGs. When we see that we actually see the whole organization benefits. That's awesome. Yes, it's been amazing for me and also the group that I lead. Like we've gotten out the opportunity to um, prevent, present to our um, executive leadership team, including the CEO, on several occasions about our initiatives and our programs. And that's huge, you know, just developing those presentation skills, those public speaking skills, those senior leader interaction skills, um, drawing out a roadmap and seeing an initiative through from conception to completion. It's been huge. And I, I've seen the evolution and growth of the people that I work with, and it's been amazing. So it's, it's definitely um, a very impactful um, part of the organization that I think everyone should be a part of. Absolutely. And then the other thing I'm definitely going to hit on is this whole idea of allyship, right? That when we're thinking about our employee resource groups, it's also a really important place for us to practice allyship, right? You've said it a couple of times. Like it, when we think about our employee resource groups, I think sometimes people have in their mind, well, then it's only people, you know, from certain social identity could be part of it. And I think you can't lose sight of the fact that it should be designed with the group in mind, right? And and that they should have leadership roles and, and all of those things. But that's not in like, it has to be to the exclusion of everybody else, right? That that really can be a beautiful place to foster this idea of bringing along allies and giving them the tools that they need and the space to be able to grow. It's definitely been a great educational platform, um, bringing in people in and having those candid, crucial, uncomfortable conversations. And I've had people come back to me and say, you know, I really had no idea. I didn't know. And then I can give you, you know, my own example of that, um, being able to attend resource group meetings that I may not have a direct correlation with. But walking away from that conversation, learning more about that group and their experiences and um, how I can help be an ally for them. So it's not just about us receiving allyship. It's about being an ally for others as well. Um, so definitely a huge opportunity for education and growth. And I think that's the core of DEI. Once we start understanding the experiences of others and understanding why certain things are important to them, why culturally some things may be offensive or some things, you know, may be viewed in a certain light, it then it helps us to grow and, and, and improve on our allyship as well. So if you're out there. And you're doing something in marketing. And I would argue that even if it's not part of your title or you're not in, you know, every one of us is in some way or another marketing for our organizations because of how we show up in the world and what we do and what we say about our companies and all of that. Then if you're not part of uh, employee resource groups and you're not leveraging that within your company, I think you heard it from Carla here. Go do it. Go take advantage of that. Go, go use those, those spaces to really help yourself grow and to, to, to build on your own education. So uh, Carla, I do have one more question for you. Cause I'm always curious. Can you tell <laughs> us a little bit about something that brings you joy? Absolutely. So on the personal side, I would say it's my family, my son being first. Um, I'm I'm very close knit to my family. We take um, family vacations together every year and just spending time with them, seeing them happy, creating those beautiful mem- memories is, is paramount to me. Um, on the professional side, I would say seeing that things are changing, seeing that people and organizations are starting to embrace the concept of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and not only that is being accepted, but it's becoming an essential, an essential part of the business process. Um, same thing, how things are evolving and growing. Um, we do have a long way to go, um, but I'm excited because five years ago, we were not having these conversations. So that shows advancements. That shows that we're moving ahead. And that, that brings me extreme joy. 
Awesome. All right, Carla. So I know people are going to want to keep following and learning more about you and your marketing journey in the DEI space. So what's the best way for them to do that? I would say LinkedIn is the best way, the best platform to keep in touch with me. Um, I believe it's linkedin.com slash Carla Fulmore, Carla Heights and Fulmore. Um, I'm always on there promoting um, DNI articles. I'm um, telling more about DNI initiatives that I'm involved in and just bringing awareness to the whole diversity, equity, and inclusion platform. Awesome. So we'll make sure that those are in the show notes just so that everybody can click on there and, and go right to Carla's page and, and connect with her. But Carla, thank you so much for being here with us today and for all that you're doing to expand our, our thinking around DEI, in particular, as it relates to our employee resource groups and as it relates to marketing. Thank you for the invitation. I enjoy being a part of the conversation. Wonderful. For those of you who are joining us, we also want to say thank you to you. We couldn't do this work if it wasn't without you and your wonderful questions and suggestions on other people that we should be interviewing. So thank you for participating in our podcast for another week. If you're new, please come back again. If you've been with us for a while, keep on coming back and invite somebody. We love um, increasing the, the number of people that we get a chance to work with and, and really learn from too. So please feel free to like, share, do all the things that you do when you are enjoying the content of, of a podcast. We also would love to hear your feedback. So if you do have an idea for our guest or you have a question, please feel free to go to our website, upliftingimpact.com. You can comment there. You can also follow uh, Justin and I, the, the two co-hosts on LinkedIn. We are pretty active there and would love to be able to stay connected. Until next week, keep on uplifting the impact. Thanks, everyone.